Come have some fun and watch some games. Time to get crazy. It's night and day. Yeah. So, as sad as we are to see it go, uh, that is the end of Walking Dead, the final season. And I guess we'll just sum up how we felt about the whole thing. We'll start, kind of do a summary of everything. We won't go into everything to the exact same level of detail as we did before, because right. if you're interested in doing, seeing our thoughts on that, the deep dive is on each individual final, episode, final part yeah. of each episode. Yeah. But we can cover it here, and then we'll go into our final thoughts, thoughts overall yeah. on the whole game. Right, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I guess we'll start at the beginning. Yeah, episode one, I guess. Um, I mean, it kind of gives you, I mean, this is new Clem, um, and you get to see AJ kind of, uh, you you see him becoming an adult, I guess, but he's still very childish in that way. Mm -hmm. Like, he's obviously relying on Clem, very hardcore, but then he's, like, in the backseat just, like, flipping his revolver and doing all yeah. that stuff, so it's a it was a very, like, fun way to introduce you to the... Um, hey, 4D. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a fun way to like introduce you back into their life again, um, and then yeah, I mean they, they kind of hit the ground running right out of the gate with like crap hits the fan, um, and the car is gone. You have to get saved by this group and um, and whatnot, and so you know that she can't handle 100 percent of everything on her own. Um, so I, I mean I think they did a good job of framing it well, um, and you get to see kind of. AJ shine a little bit when he's helping Clem out mm -hmm. through all these different um, through like their chores now that they have to do is go find food and he's just like killing walkers like willy nilly it's not really like a huge deal for him right. and he knows all the rules and, and everything like that so it sets a good foundation episode one was was good for sure and also like the whole the whole uh, nostalgia for wanting to see Clem again after like New Frontier and things like that um, you finally get to see, okay, she's she's a little bit happier now that she's with AJ, which was kind of the final resolution to what uh, New Frontier was uh, right. overall, yeah. I am kind of surprised with how harshly they dumpster-fired New Frontier. Mm. Like, I would have thought they would have at least just included at the end, I was thinking the confrontation with Lily's group would have ended with Javi's group swooping in to kind mm -hmm. of do this rescue where the kids were in over their heads. Right, right. And then the other group that they were already foreshadowed they were at war with yeah. could come in and the kids really, they couldn't defeat a whole army because that's unrealistic, even though that's what happened. But, yeah. the, but then... Um, they really screwed up the the Delta's plans, and the Raiders were totally having to put out all these fires, right. literal fires, where the kids were setting their supplies on fires and all this. And then the kids couldn't defeat an army of several hundred or several thousand people. But then that, while they were so distracted and thrown into chaos, then Javi's team came back, and they would get the quick cameo and pay the respects to yeah. New Frontier without right. shining a spotlight or spending too much time with them. Mm -hmm. But they just said no. Yeah, exactly. We're not acknowledging. That is detached completely. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, what happened, we whatever. We barely included this mm -hmm. in the cutscene summary before the game started. Just a quick shot of Javi and David. No. Okay, done. Bye. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We had five meetings and we spent at least like 30 company hours disguise, fighting over to even include that. So they're yeah. lucky. They should be grateful for what they got. F those people, even though some of them are us. So <laughs> that's... Anyway, but yeah, this game, amazing. I was really yeah. impressed. Uh, I do like where we started, where you just start out with Clem and AJ. You don't have to see Clem's fight or going back to the bar or going back to the farm where she found him and right, all of right. that. I like that they... Fast forward it past that. They're mm -hmm. already together. That's the most important part. Start them out. Show the dynamic. Show yep. how AJ learns from everything that Clem's doing and that he takes every lesson to heart. Awesome. Great yeah. stuff. And it's great to be back with Clem because, yeah, the New Frontier cast wasn't that impressive. Um, I mean, they had their struggles as explained to us by Pop-Tart Milkman, which right. explains why they were so unimpressive. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so I thought this was great. Amazing way to start it. And I thought especially the first episode was really strong mm -hmm. with the the writing and the way things panned out. It seemed like the kids were this really well-trained, cohesive group. Mm -hmm. They rescued Clem. They gave her medical attention. They knew their crap. They had bow and arrow. They had archery skills. They yeah. had all of these traps. Yeah, they right. were this like 
really respectable, well organized force. Right. In 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 episode one. So <laughs> I I really liked episode one and the ending with um with AJ taking out Marlin. I thought that was really right. well done. It yeah. did, again, it didn't hit me with the, the exact shock value that they were going for because I thought AJ's response was totally fine. Mm. It was appropriate. Pop Dark Milkman, I keep bringing him up, but he's the one who's been, you know, giving us kind of the general consensus community feedback and behind the scenes info. Right. So we'll right. refer to that. Sometimes he's been giving us comments consistently throughout the series. Yeah. So, yeah, in any case, he had said that most people don't do that. They say that, um, that what he was wrong. AJ did was wrong right, and it was right. murder because he said specifically the line that that uh, the line of dialogue that Clem says at that point is, "Oh, it's okay to kill people if they're hurting people, but Marlin was stopped. He had stopped. He wasn't hurting anyone anymore. Mm-hmm. So that's why it was murder." Right. Yeah, yeah. I think that's an interesting justification, but I think it's way too easy. It's it's not a satisfying conclusion because. Marlin was calm for like, you know, three minutes right. after he was a rage monster for yeah, a lot he's... longer. And what he had done in the past already showed a habitual pattern right. of putting himself first and putting other people in danger right. if he so chose. Right, so yeah. I don't think that you can easily and justify, I, I don't think you can um, definitively say mm-hmm. Marlin is no longer a threat ever, ever. Right. And right, therefore, yeah. you shouldn't have shot him. Like, Marlin was still. He was calm for the moment, absolutely, but he was still a potential major threat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And after, like, what you saw, or what Clem saw, down in the basement, after he, like, snaps or whatever, and he pushes, um, uh, I forget her name, but he pushes her into... Um, Brody? Was it Brody that that um, that Marlin killed? Yes. Okay, yeah, it was Brody then. <laughs> um, but yeah, after he pushes Brody and, like, splits her head open... Like, you know what he's capable of doing, and not only is that his, like, I mean, that's a huge offense against him right there, mm-hmm. but then you also know about his background with, like, trading under the table with this group, and uh, the group is not, like, the group obviously wants more people, so when is it going to stop? And then, it, it's, he's, he's essentially, like, going down the slippery slope, um, and... I, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like he was justified. It's only a matter of time before he does something like this again or something worse. Right. So, yeah, I mean, he it was a very abrupt way to do it, uh, but, I mean, he's going to take the opportunity when he has it. It's not like AJ's going to be able to fight Marlon one-on-one. Um, so, he's got to take... Gun, he still potentially could. I mean, it's still... Potentially, but I think, um, did, I think Marlon also had a gun on him. Earlier, um, yeah, earlier, the gun was that, yeah. AJ had the gun, and then Marlon took the gun. Mm, yeah, yeah, that so, whole thing. Yeah, gun was flying around. So yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, so yeah, I mean, AJ's going to take the opportunity when he sees it. He saw it, and he took the shot. So I mean, yeah, I think he was well within his rights. Um, and obviously, like Clem was also on the chopping block there, and right. And AJ is going to do a hundred percent what he can do to protect Clem, which is what he did. So yeah, there you go. I mean, I get how some people could say that, like, oh, he took it too far because his back was turned to him and all that kind of stuff. But in this world, I, I don't think you have the, um, like, you, you can't stand for, for stuff like that and give people that opportunity to wrong you, like, that many times and hurt the group that much before you finally, like, put something into your own hands there. So, yeah, I mean, good work for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> And we covered some of this already in the comments back and forth with Pop Tart Milkman, but we're gonna still go over that again anyway here, right, or at right. least a portion of that, because not everybody reads through every comment. Right. So just to give a recap on our thoughts, I guess, of yeah. things we've covered before. Yeah. Because yeah, he was saying that most people, again, don't think that AJ was justified. They think it was murder. He's saying that the kids would potentially still side with Marlin, even because that was a major problem that mm-hmm. we had. Yeah. Um, why are the kids? Like still backing still Marlin loyal so to him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In part two, after Marlin came right up and said, "Yo, I did it," <laughs> well, yeah. any of you would have done it, or that sort of thing. So right, he right. wasn't denying it. So that's the part where I still think once we get to episode two, the writing kind of starts to decline. Right. Not throughout the whole thing. There are still definitely 
high points, mm -hmm. but that was one of the points that didn't really make much sense to us. If everyone else in the world has a different opinion, that's fine. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah to me, if somebody, if somebody I know is like selling people and like doing that ultimate betrayal, and they sell somebody else who I know, and then I'm gonna be pretty upset about that. I'm not gonna, even if that person had been somebody who was helping me out for a long, long time, if they yeah. sold people and that person was our leader or whoever, it doesn't right. matter. Like if they're, there are certain lines you just can't cross. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, if he sells people and betrays it and covers it up. So if he gets to that point and crosses that line, I don't see the kids sticking with him no matter what. Even right. if they wanted, that AJ didn't shoot him. They thought, okay, the situation has been diffused I, and they wanted to deal with Marlon another way. Right, right. That's one thing, but like completely backing Marlon and hating AJ over it seems like way too extreme after Marlon admitted he had betrayed them and sold the others. Like, it's... Anyway, that's, yeah. that's my thought on that it. Sold the others and killed Brody like 10 minutes ago. Right. Also, yeah, so... And that's like a major... <laughs> Because now he's not like letting other people do it. Like he's selling people to other people, and um, whoever he sold them to, I mean, will do whatever mal malfeasance he wants with them. Um, the people that he sold, but he's the one that's now perpetuating violence onto other people within the own their their own group. So it's like to me, that's a, I mean, that's a huge point that they should look at. It's like we can't be killing each other. And now you're defending someone that literally just killed one of your own mm -hmm. that you cared for. Now it's like, now it's like almost you don't you don't care about Brody at all, right? Because he just killed her, and that's like okay, no big deal. That's it. Yeah, game over. Um, Marlon's still number one, I guess. Yeah, but that doesn't yeah really that doesn't make much sense to me. Yeah, I could see them wanting to support Marlon, but Marlon didn't really give himself that out. Like if it had happened a different way. Or if Marlon and Brody and Minnie and Sophie were all going, were all traveling and they got, they encountered a group of like, you know, 20 or 50 or 100 raiders right. with all guns on them, then it's like, okay, Marlon at that point feels more like his hand is forced right. as opposed to what we heard was it was just like Lily and Abel. Right. And it's like, okay, if four of you encounter Lily and Abel, you got plenty of options. Yeah, exactly. Or the other version is if Minnie and Sophie said, yeah, Marlon, okay, they're asking for people, we will go. Right, yeah, exactly. We, they volunteer exactly, to keep yeah. everyone else safe. Yeah. Then it's totally fine, mm -hmm. because then it's on Minnie and Sophie. But that's not how it was described in the actual game. In the actual game, they made it sound like Marlon made the call. Exactly, yeah. Brody backed the play. Mm -hmm. Then they perpetuated the lie, instead of telling everybody exactly. about it. Yeah. And then, even after that, they were saying... Well, he was racked by guilt by it. It's like, yeah, there were signs that he felt super guilty. Who cares? Like, right. Yeah. He did a super horrible thing. Yeah, yeah. If a rapist exactly. feels super guilty, good. Yeah. You're still, what he did was a super horrible thing. Yeah. He deserves yeah. to feel that guilt. And it didn't change his ways or make him a better person because as soon as we got there, he was thinking, as soon as Abel came back into the picture, he was going to sell or trade Clem and, and AJ, AJ next. Yeah, exactly. So he was like... A monster. <laughs> he didn't like learn from his mistakes and he'll never do it again. At the drop of a hat, he's like, oh, uh, they're coming back. We've got to find somebody else to throw out there. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he wasn't a changed man. He didn't like try to be better. He just felt really bad about it and he was just going to continue doing it. And that was his, going to be his life. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he got taken out doing what he loved. Right. And you understand what where Marlon was coming from. He was just. He was. He wasn't unrealistically written. He was just trying to save his own skin, of, mm -hmm. yeah. and even the other kids and at the, the school yeah, yeah. over other people. But he would still always. Marlon was first, and the part that we don't understand, or that I don't understand, it sounds like you're on the same page. Is mm -hmm. why would the other kids stick with him after it's all come out yeah, into yeah. the open? Like that's where it's like, okay, I don't buy it. Right. The, yeah. Sure, he can do what he did. It makes sense. He's there are selfish and cowardly people in the world. Yeah. yeah. And people who make the wrong calls when tough call, tough, tough decisions times, come yeah. up, sure. Yeah. But then everybody backs his play. That's where it's like, no. Like right. you said, Brody was just killed by him. Yeah. And not only did you learn that he gave away Sophie and Minerva, but now he is looking to give away AJ and Clem. Yeah. So it's like, this is, 
How can you guys not see you're next on that yeah, list? Exactly. Anybody yeah. whose name is not Marlins na- is next, on, next that list. on that list. Yeah, exactly. What's with the? I don't. I don't buy the kids being loyal mm. to him. Yeah. At, yeah. At, no. Past uh, that point, no way. And I guess the other thing that I found interesting, like yeah, when we get first introduced to the the school, like like you said, I thought it was like, oh, this is a safe haven. Like they got it down pat because you can't really survive in this world making mistakes like this and and Mm -hmm. you have to be on your like on your p's and q's to make sure everything happens flawlessly or else something's gonna slip through the cracks and you're probably gonna die um and like they have the traps they have the setup they have everything um but then when the whole marlin thing happens after like it seems like after that it all goes away it's like I don't know if Marlon was the glue that was holding it together or what, but... I want to show you my picture. What is this picture? Yeah, what is that? Tell me it to be. You want me to make up what this picture is? Why does that always happen? <laughs> Alright, this is a dragon car. This is a dragon, and he's got... His wings are starting to fly, and he's got wheels. And he's shooting out his... Here's his front, here's his mouth. He's breathing a little bit of fire. And he's gonna fly away or drive away. Those are the Which options. Most efficient. This is a dragon car. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, the whole concept of the school being a uh, like. Pregnable fortress. Yeah, exactly. This fortress that, um, like, is gonna keep or is keeping everyone safe that's in there and. It's kind of like almost self-sustaining in a way where they have these different things set up for food and different areas and all that kind of stuff. It seems like before Marlin, they have all these plans set up and everyone knows their, their roles and everyone can kind of add to this society of people they've created. But then as soon as Marlin goes away, like they don't know how to function at all. And then the school now becomes like this, it's kind of a risk at this point because like they don't really know how to run it they're all kind of freaking out about um the lack of guidance and like the greenhouse thing was a huge a huge thing to me like when they're like oh we can't go there it collapsed and there's walkers everywhere and then when you go there it's like okay there's three walkers here you could have easily taken care of this like um and the you would think that like they would prioritize that greenhouse so they don't have to leave the walls of the school to go get food and whatever and so like the return on the investments there but i don't know why they just like didn't think of it or they were terrified and clem like single-handedly wiped out everything there and it was totally fine yeah it was probably one of those scenarios where the writers change yeah like every other walking dead each episode had different writers we weren't Mm -hmm. paying attention as much to this one but yeah sean vanaman was (laughs) not the one who wrote every single part of the first Season, I don't oh, think. Oh, right, right, okay. Yeah, in the other Walking Dead games, they don't have the same team of writers working on every single one of the episodes. Right, So right. it seems here that there was a major disconnect between who set the premise for the greenhouse and who paid it off. Mm, yeah. Because, yeah, it just made no, no yeah, sense. Yeah, no sense at all. It, they could have easily made it made sense, mm-hmm. made it make sense, by having just the greenhouse connected to, like, extend to an area outside the school where there, the wall had failed and zombies were constantly in and out. Exactly. Then yeah. you can't access it. Fine. You need a bigger plan. You know, draw away the whole horde with a large sound, this and here. Right, right. But also make sure that it, the horde doesn't go into their hunting grounds. And that's like the big trick. Right. Or else the kids could have done it. So it has to be something that a, that uh, Clem devises a plan right, for that they right. never thought of. So they, you have to redirect the horde away from the greenhouse and not through the hunting grounds, or else they'll also eat all your freaking deers and rabbits. And right, crap. right. True. But anyway, they could have made it make sense. They didn't. You're right. Four walkers is not. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, episode two, the writing took a downturn. There were the three major plot hole points from our perspective. Right, yeah, you right. Might, you might think that all the kids like should be loyal sense. to yeah. yeah to Marlin. Should be loyal to Marlin forever. And maybe you would still be loyal to your friend. I know you would want to be loyal to your friend. Yeah, exactly. But after your friend comes out and says, oh, by the way... I'm a human trafficker and murderer. Yeah, Uh, exactly. Ride hard for me. Like, (laughs) vote for me for class president. Like, after that, yeah, you're going to be like, I I like 
the past you, but right now, I, I think we're done. Yeah. yeah. Or even if they just had Lewis stay loyal to him, because Lewis had known him forever, yeah, not like just since the school, but yeah. for his whole life. Yeah. That would have at least been made more sense. But yeah, as soon as your friend is like, yeah, I'm into human trafficking, you know your best friend? Well, your girlfriend, your sister, and your super close friend, I, I sold them. Love me. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Follow me, my children. <laughs> it's like, like, you may bow now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Worship me, yeah. I am done. I am as the sun. Yeah. Like, okay, well, come, come on. Yeah. So anyway, oh, the army attacking with just five people. Oh, they're talked right. up to be this major force. Yeah, right, right. So yeah, you're totally right that they set it up to, as the school was this amazing fortress, and mm -hmm. then suddenly the kids whether it was Marlin or just writing inconsistency, like the kids who could put in these gigantic, super amazing traps to destroy walkers, like huge boulders and logs and all right. of this stuff, couldn't come up with anything similar to defend their own school. Right, like yeah. They seemed like, again, the greenhouse was a major thing, totally overrun, and the greenhouse was four walkers. Yeah. And then the kids were this amazingly well... In, like this force with a lot of ingen ingenuity yeah, yeah. and then they couldn't come up with anything in a two week period yeah. other than like this most meager of defense and after we're, we also see like later we see Violet marching Clem up to you know have some nice romantic moment right. when they're like oh that's a cool romantic and yeah look at the stars right beautiful right, but right. yeah you could have had snipers up there right yeah exactly what are you doing yeah have people like you know the opportunity, you know the layout, like, you know where they're going to come from. Um, like, they tried, uh, I think they put uh, barbed wire or whatever to make them come through one spot. Right. But then you don't do anything with that obvious, like, thing that you created there. Yeah. That single point of entry. Um, they, yeah, they just used that to make sure that he could put the bomb in the truck. Yeah. But even then, it's like, if you have all of the... Raiders right here, there's going to be a higher chance that one of them sees the dude trying to deliver the bomb. Right, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. And all of that fell apart. Like, there should have been, again, that was the other thing, why were the Raiders described as an army when they attack with a squad of seven guys? It was like, yeah, maybe six or seven people and a carriage, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. like they, yeah, like they think, I mean, they did cover it a little bit with Lily saying this was supposed to be easy, oh, but yeah. still, like, even if you think it's going to be easy just because you have a couple of weapons doesn't mean that a school of like two to three times your number right like, is it going to be gonna like have present any a issues certain amount yeah. yeah like you walked in there with the intention of like oh this is going to be a fight i mean yeah you probably um underestimated them thinking oh they're just kids or whatever they're stupid they don't know what they're doing uh which based on the writing kind of seemed that way but um yeah, but still, you would think if you have all of those resources available to you, you just take advantage of it to lose or take the loss of uh, other resources like off the table. Yeah. Um, so yeah. they could have tied it together in a way that made sense. It's easy. You have again instead of seven raiders, you have a group of thirty. They mm -hmm. don't think they necessarily need more than twenty or thirty guys to take out the school. Oh, if the yeah. twenty or thirty guys have AKs, but then as Mitch said earlier, you're not making one bomb with that much propane and that much fertilizer. Mitch has a bomb. He has like, you know, he has 10 bombs. Yeah. He Five of them go off the right way. Five of them miss. Fire, fine, whatever. And then, boom. Then you're down to seven rings. Yeah, right. Perfect. Yeah. Everything makes sense. But yeah. yeah, the problems with episode two are they oversell the threat. Greenhouse, raiders, mm -hmm kids ability to defend right, and then right. they undersell the payoff with all three of those yeah so yeah. definite problems in part two but there were also amazing There's parts also, of part two. yeah great parts of part two for sure yeah. uh, i mean that the whole siege was awesome like in in concept for sure yeah of like and bringing lily back was a huge yes huge positive yeah lily was amazing really well handled great that they ended her story um, I'm still curious as to what happened to Krista. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, amazing to get some resolution with Lily. She was a great character. You can see it, her realistically turn into this like crazy commando right, army, right, like, yeah. badass. And um, yeah, amazing 
really well handled the way they brought her back. The siege concept was great. Mm -hmm. Having the kids, like again, if they maintained their level of um, ingenuity yep. from episode one to two, where they were this force to be reckoned with, it would have made all the difference in the world. For sure. Then yeah. the school becomes this like major bastion where this these this group is hardcore worth fighting for. The school is hardcore worth fighting for. Right. It's the super well defended. Basically, it is a fortress. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then it takes out twenty raiders, no problem. Mm -hmm. And you've got only seven left, and they're like, oh, what do we do? And they start like really gunning kids down. Yeah, right, like, right. They're super dangerous because they're feeling completely threatened and just thrown to chaos right. compared yeah, to exactly. what their original plans were. It all can make sense. It just didn't. So, yeah. But the siege concept was great. Amazing concept. A lot of fun to like play through to that build idea. Up to, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. They had a lot, yeah, a lot to work with on that. And especially like you, it, it would have been nicer if um, like Clem wasn't the only one to push forward those, those plans. Mm -hmm. But like seeing the actual like plans come together a little bit was was pretty fun, very interesting to see. Like, okay, like we're gonna actually introduce some strategy into this. We're gonna try and fight this off as best we can. We know what to expect somewhat, so we're gonna. Uh, I mean, they clear out the greenhouse. They put up the barbed wires. They put like spikes all over the ground with like Walker heads and just like freak them out or whatever. But like you see their attempts at least of. Um, of what a, a crazy siege would be. It would be nicer if they had a lot more there. But um, yeah, in concept, is is very cool. And then you also have, I mean, at the same time, then you have the interpersonal things happening also with like oh, yeah, Lewis yeah. And, and, and Clem Violet. and Violet and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, it's very like I, I I do like kind of the way that they played off each other very well. It's a lot of like really good. I guess like chemistry between the characters, not necessarily yeah. like romantically, but um, just how they jive with within the group with themselves. Yeah, and yeah. enough to make it be romantic. It could go either way. Exactly. It yeah. wouldn't be a stretch. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I thought that was really well done. And we could have actually pro pro progressed with the relationship for, with one or the other. Yeah. I think we were hesitant because it was like, well, they haven't known him that long, but that was kind of right after the whole two weeks later joke. Exactly. So yeah. it's they kind of are doing the thing where they let the player fill in the blank exactly. if they want to. Yeah. Well, you know, they've been flirting nonstop for these two weeks. So it yeah. makes sense to like make their relationship like pursue this further. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So we could have gone with that. I still think from where we were coming from, it made more sense to have um, or Clem had a better relationship and a better back and forth with with Lewis. Yeah. But again, we you could have filled in your own blanks. Yeah. And Lewis was still not taking things seriously. Going back, like maybe we we would have pursued the relationship with either of them. Yeah. Yeah. Potentially. It's just the way that it was set up just then was just like Lewis's thing was transparent and mm -hmm. Violet's thing with us. We need to make sure that the walls are sound. Sounded like a legit thing, even though they didn't do that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so we kind of got. We played Clem as the responsible Clem. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. Exactly. Um, oh, the other thing in part two that was awesome was the introduction of James, where like, oh. you suddenly see this concept of whisperers. I don't know if that's in the comics or the movie or the show or whatever, but right. it seems like a total badass concept. Yeah. When we first got to see it, like he seemed like he could be this, and he was this like major impactful force mm -hmm. of how he could walk with and manipulate the walkers right. in that way. So that was pretty awesome. Later he turned out to be a dick. Yeah. But that part was awesome. Yeah, getting to see like a totally different take, I guess, on um, dealing with these walkers because you kind of only see one throughout most of this is just you gotta fight them to the death. Right. Um, it's I, it's kill or be killed, literally. So you're gonna do what you gotta do. But he like takes like a totally new concept to a totally new take on it, and it's very interesting for sure um, to watch his like um, him like explain his philosophy and how he got to be the way he is and whatever. Um, it's just very interesting to watch him with the, the whole skin, like the oh, masks yeah, yeah. and everything like that. It's just, a, yeah, a really cool concept. And I like that they threw it in here as like a, um, like introduce a totally polar opposite kind of character than what you're normally used to seeing. Yeah. Um, it definitely like widens the, um, it widens the, I guess the, the feeling that you get for it because you can see a little bit of everyone's side of things early on, like when they just introduced them, yeah. Yeah. And then we go on to episode three. Yeah. The 
The siege on the actual raider boat was pretty damn cool. Yeah. They actually, at the beginning, gathered some intel so it wasn't just flying completely by the seat of their pants as they like to do in these mm -hmm. stories yeah. with no plan. Right. The plan was still a little bit weak. I guess, yeah, the major problem I would have with episode three was the plan was weak and they threw a party. It's another one of those things like just when the raiders were attacking them and when they attacked the raiders, right. like, no. If you're going to do this and you're going to pull it off as this group of this ragtag group of crazy kids yeah can yeah actually defeat well-trained army even if the army wasn't well-trained they've got ak's and yeah exactly so if the kids can win they can win i have no problem with that and i like that story yeah for sure but let them be smarter let them outsmart the people who are underestimating them mm -hmm. that's how they can get the they can you know get the drop on their opponent that's right. how they can get the victory yeah so yeah, for sure they needed to do that a little bit more as opposed to like Willie's the Just, only one working on a plan, and yeah, the rest of them yeah, are like, exactly. jazz or country? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're, we're going to throw a little soiree together just to, like, rally the troops or whatnot. And that's, uh, that's going to be, I mean, while you're prepping for what is essentially, like, some of you may not come back. Right. So I, I feel like that's kind of, that's definitely prioritizing the wrong thing at that point. <laughs> um, it's like, yeah, I understand you want to keep morale high, but... You can't lose sight of what your goal is at the end of the day, and that is to get back all the people that you've lost. So, yeah, they have to they have to kind of buckle down and and have a plan going forward. And yeah, it does kind of suck that like they they did have intel going forward, but the only plan was really uh, put a bomb out there and <laughs> we're gonna blow some shit up and we're gonna see what happens. <laughs> so. And they well they got the James distraction point. Yeah, yeah. So that was cool. Until, like, they walked with the walkers in the only attack Ex path. Yeah, exactly. That, like, they should have had the walkers be this major distraction while they came in from the flank. Yeah, exactly. Not so, dodging bullets and using walkers as shields. Yeah. Like, that's the worst possible way. Yeah, when a bullet goes through a rotting corpse walker, it's going to hit you. Yeah. If there's, like, a... Try it. Don't try this at home, kids. But if you have a watermelon in front of you, there's a reason why cops don't use watermelons as bulletproof vests. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? Yeah. yeah. They don't go to freaking Gary's Salty Peaches <laughs> to obtain their riot gear. They're, right, okay, yeah. Guys? Exactly, exactly. I mean, if you don't know what Gary's Salty Peaches is, that's because we didn't include that in this part, <laughs> but we will probably put it in as a um, podcast, like, unpodcast later on. Right, yeah. It was, it's, it was <laughs> Gary and his Salty Peaches. Yes, it was but, suitably night yeah, and day. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, I agree. The I mean, the concept of um, like James using the walkers as a distraction was great. Right, the, like, perfect idea. Yeah, a hundred percent great idea. But then yeah, them just like huddled behind walkers. It's like who in the right mind would go in the like line of fire like that? It's like why not? Yeah, just go for the flank. It's gonna be a lot better for you, and um, everyone's gonna be focused all on that side. So you kind of have free reign for a while. Yeah, they also didn't explain why the walkers wouldn't just turn around and eat them when they smell the fresh human right next to them, right. as opposed to yeah, they heard a loud noise over there before, but you know. But like yeah, I have dinner here. Right. right exactly. Yeah. yeah. You and, don't drive 200 miles that way when you've got like the restaurant yeah. right next <laughs> right to you. Right next door. Yeah. So, for sure. Anyway. That, but the siege itself was pretty sweet. Like yeah. putting that aside, like we said during the episode, like especially where Clem's going underwater and you see the water. Yeah, that part was amazing. Going yeah. Up, yeah, that was so well done. Yeah, finally, finally getting to see like them underwater, like still moving forward, still doing like unbothered by it. Essentially, is great. And then, um, yeah, I mean the even at like as the siege is happening and when you have the final like interactions with when you get. Um, like Lewis back and everything like that. You get to meet him. That was awesome. That they did such a good job with that. That was incredible. Like I was, I was blown away that they did it. But like kudos to them for doing it. Like that was very well done. Yeah, they showed that 
these people were not messing around. Yeah. Like this is what's at stake here. Right. And they're willing to do whatever. So, right. And it yeah. works too because you go into the cells and Omar and Asim are like, yep, yep, yep. We're doing what they're saying. We're doing what they're saying. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Anything exactly. they say, you're the boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So like, yeah, much more realistic depiction of torture than you see in ninety-five probably percent like, <laughs> yeah. of movies and TV shows where the person is always captured and gets out with barely a scratch or they just punch him a lot. And oh yeah. Loses, but you just like yeah, black and blue, black yeah. eye or whatever, and then that's it. And then yeah. they're fine after like a couple of days. Even immediately in, in some of the less realistic shows, as soon as they're rescued, they're like, oh, time for payback. Oh like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, <laughs> so. Yeah, in any case, yeah, it was really well done that they were willing to go to that length. Mm -hmm. So, And the end confrontation with Lily and Clem and oh, um, yeah. AJ and James. And James, yeah. Yeah, especially with how we see in part four how things could have gone. Yeah, yeah they could so, have escalated to where James's yeah. own philosophy is what kills him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was really... Definitely. Again, yeah. another round of applause for the developers on that yeah, one. Yeah, very so, well done for sure. And well then, done. yeah, that brings us to part four where mm -hmm. I really, really, really didn't like a, we thought they were going to bring a whole new antagonist in there but there wasn't time for that right so either lily survives part three maybe with the james thing right and then she takes the the place of james being this antagonist for that initial that portion four, yeah and then the four, next yeah. portion still comes down to mini mm -hmm. and that was done so well that was so cool especially with the song and everything yeah yeah it was just Man, again, a round of applause yeah. to the developers. <laughs> Another part where they nailed it. The song with the creep factor of yeah. she's like partially turning. She's yeah, yeah, exactly. Like she it's like bites everywhere and she like doesn't care. She has one thing in mind and she's gonna go and essentially handle her business. Yeah. And yeah, she's just like decrepit, bleeding everywhere. Yeah. And the song is It was so... such a cool scene where she's like just emerging from the forest singing mm -hmm. with like still her voice is like Totally, like, yeah, exactly. She's like coming through in the moonlight, and then yeah, she has her face is shredded. And it's yeah, like, oh, yeah, freaking creepy. And yeah, so well haunted, done. For and sure. then that whole confrontation was awesome, and we got to see in the payoff that the different directions they took it mm -hmm. were also awesome. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Let AJ make that call. He can handle it. If you don't, somebody else can. Somebody, and somebody yeah, exactly. else pays. Exactly, it. yeah. And then you're losing. I mean, yeah, you have the option. Who do you want to lose? Um, Ten. Lily or not Lily, Ten Violet or Lewis, and that's right. really it. And yeah, AJ can make that hard call. He did, and no, yeah, like you said, no one else is gonna do that. Um, and so yeah, you're gonna lose somebody because of it. So wow, yeah, they did a fantastic job of like um, creating just really perfect different endings and different um, timelines to together. Uh, because I think this is probably one of the best instances I've seen where. Those choices weaving in and out of each other yeah. are like so well done. Right, um, it's that, a satisfying, realistic conclusion. Mm -hmm. Harsh, any yeah. which way you take it. Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely one of the better mm -hmm. choice resolution pairings. Right, right. Or triplings in this case, but yeah, wow, awesome, awesome, really well done. The only part of that scene that was a little bit funky was that the zombies were not eating. Mini. Mini. Yeah. Because she was turning. That's fine. They've kind of introduced that in the past. Right, right. But then they did eat Mini while she was, while she was turning. Yeah, exactly. That's not fine. Yeah. They can't be like, you're my brother. You me not eat you. Oh, you're McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Right, yeah, like <laughs> exactly. That was like, that was my, my first thought was like, oh, she's not getting bit made like and then you brought up yeah they they did kind of cover that here and there in the in the show so it's okay understandable and then yeah lo and behold when you don't need mini anymore zombies are free reign on on her now so yeah yeah that's that was the one inconsistency for sure yeah and then after that they rush it into the clem part where clem and aj are fighting for their lives mm -hmm. so yeah it's just Action to action to action, life in jeopardy to jeopardy to jeopardy to jeopardy, danger to danger to danger. So right. I thought that was actually fine because we were worried about there wouldn't be a payoff in right, part right. four. But the way they handled it was great, even without a main antagonist. Or maybe Lily still would have been that if you spared her. Right, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but yeah, it was still really well done. And then Clem. Mm. So I thought that situation was set up really well. Mm-hmm. 
and for her death. And we both had like a major emotional yeah. reaction to that. Right. And then this happened and she didn't yeah. die. Yeah. And I actually, I mean, I would have preferred an ending where she lived if it had felt like they had earned it. Yeah. But in the version that we got, I don't see that it happened. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, hundred percent. Like I, would have looked for her to to survive but like under those conditions we've never seen anyone really survive that before and like aj i don't think should have known that was an option to begin with right we didn't see that or he never saw that right clem didn't um, teach him that unless we fill in the blank with some stuff that happened maybe exactly during the years they were traveling exactly, it doesn't work because yeah. clem learned it from Lee, Lee. Yeah. she learned the opposite. Lee tried it and it doesn't work. And she said in one of the other parts, in episode two, I think, mm -hmm. episode two or three, she said, or sorry, season two or three, she right. said that never works. Yeah. Indicating she remembered that she had learned. And mm -hmm. in this episode, you can learn from Abel that it does work. If you fight him for the food, mm. he, you, he comes back later missing an arm. Ah, okay. So you see him bitten, and he comes back later missing an arm. Right, so then you learn that uh, resolution, right. Right, right? right, but that didn't happen in our mm -hmm. playthrough. Exactly. And the other side of that is you can only get that payoff, or you can only save the person if you amputate the bite location fast Immediately, enough. yeah, exactly. Yeah, like Clem was fever dreaming it. Yeah. She was starting to get the pale skin, the googly eyes. Exactly, so, yeah. She was turning like brown and everything, like the, um, like the color was fading. fading. Like it was all... It was all like not panning out well at all, and then, I mean, that was hours. It's almost it seemed like uh, by that time that yeah, they got there. So they'd been moving for a while mm -hmm. to get to that barn, and they're right. fighting for a while in the barn. She didn't look like she was in early stages, guys. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't buy what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I I don't really understand the whole concept behind it. I I know like it was great that they try to um, like save her because obviously she's she's a great character but it would have been so much more impactful if it actually ended like that if, yeah like, they they did they took that away yeah, uh, yeah they took Clem died. away from AJ and maybe there are other endings where she does die maybe yeah. what you do with yeah. AJ doesn't seem like, like it but um, if we like keep our word um, then that means she survives I guess but like maybe if we say oh we're just gonna leave then you don't do the whole hatchet thing and um, then leg obviously doesn't get cut but I don't know yeah if that's an option or if Clem is just going to survive regardless and then then it's like a lot of it's kind of like take that takes away the gravity for sure right and, it doesn't seem like she should in every case because it doesn't seem like if she said the earlier lesson was you run instead of you shoot me yeah. when she does the lesson of what do we do if I get bitten right then he once we get to that barn part, she should be reinforcing that instead of the, you have to kill me, and mm -hmm. being like, no, you've got to get out of here, you yeah, shouldn't do right. this, and then he leaves. Like, yeah, but in our, it doesn't seem like she would have had to have lived through every scenario, and it would be cool in those instances to see that she doesn't. Yeah, exactly. But in our case, although, yeah, like we were saying at the beginning, it's awesome, I mean, it's sad to have, it's heart-wrenching to have her go because yeah. she was innocent, Mm -hmm. And, like, she didn't deserve it by any stretch. Mm -hmm. All she's done is to look after AJ or even these other kids. Yeah, yeah Just trying to sure. do the right thing. So it felt heart-wrenching. But, you know, the way that it panned out, it felt like the heart-wrenching emotional ending is what we got. And to kind of... The way they cleaned it was a little yeah. bit too cut-and-dry Hollywood yeah, ending. exactly, exactly, yeah. I, would, I mean, this is a harsh universe to live in. And so, like... Having harsh things happen just makes sense. Uh, it's right. like not every story in this world is going to have a happy ending. Actually, majority of them don't. And so, like, just to kind of put the happy ending in there for the sake of it being a happy ending takes away a lot of the um, the emotion that you felt when you were going through it in the first place. So. Yeah, you can't have too much of a Hollywood ending for a Walking Dead exactly yeah. scenario. Right. And that that would have come if it was the harsher version. It would have had the right. Um, ending where AJ's conclusion was the hard decisions are always unfair. unfair. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, I think that was a little bit hokey. Um, maybe we got there on a route that certain people don't take, or maybe that is the majority route, maybe, and yeah. it's a little bit hokey. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, I do think they kind of dropped the ball in that specific instance. On that one, yeah, For, as a resolution of that um, that interaction, yeah, I 
I would have preferred it uh, if they kind of stuck to their guns and actually like made the the hard call, yeah, and made that impactful and had, decision. It would have been sad with Clem dead. I mean, it, with Clem's alive. I mean, this doesn't have to be the final season. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'd be really surprised if they don't. Like the majority of people say, uh, the final season part two, because <laughs> as long as you're paying us, there's gonna there's not gonna be really more, be a yeah. final. Exactly. Yeah. Final Fantasy. 16 is coming out, none of them are fine. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, overall, overall impression, amazing! Yeah, fantastic. Really good. Fantastic game. Um, yeah, they obviously, yeah, it has some small things you can nitpick at for sure, but overall, the quality of the storytelling, so good. Getting to see the characters again was, was great, and actually getting to see, like, Clem and AJ interact, the way they interacted was just, it was, like, so good. The chemistry between them was great. Yeah. Um, like they're back and forth. Clem's stern when she has to be, but she's like friendly and caring most of the time, and it's so great. Eh, she like, does drop the ball. There was a few opportunities where like a well, she could be better. Like, yeah, yeah. An opportunity for a lesson comes up, mm. and she says nothing, and she just kind of lets it play <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess some of it is choices, and, and it's that whole thing that we had. Like the summary that you get doesn't always match the the thing that they say right um, yeah and whatnot, yeah the so. dialogue choices are not descriptive enough. exactly yeah exactly but yeah overall amazing but relationship between the fantastic, two of them yeah great interaction between clem and the kids mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly the other kids at the school were they all had their own personalities they were really well done mm -hmm. the school environment um there were a couple of times when it came down to the whole why are you guys fighting to the death mm -hmm. for to keep this school. the school yeah so yeah. they could have sold that as again if they kept the episode one kids in school and kept that moving forward like we have all of this stuff right here we don't want to give it up yeah. to go into the unknown because the raiders are a serious threat and we might have to do that but we really really would want to fight for it because it is this totally amazing place yeah it's exactly like this shangri-la basically yeah. you don't have many bastions of strong fortresses in the apocalypse mm -hmm. so getting out of here we could do it but it's really rolling the dice but it wasn't like that it's like this school's all right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a building. It's like I, it's falling apart. Yeah, I'd like to stay, and then they're like, "Okay, we're gonna fight for yeah. it." Yeah, exactly. Like they didn't sell the school as the bastion. Yeah, right, right, hard exactly. Enough. That they set it up to be before. Right. And then took it away a little bit. So the bit. premise is great. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Having a school, especially a place where kids, Clem's age and AJ's age, mm -hmm. you can't find that anywhere. So that makes sense that Clem would want to fight for it if it's safe. If it's yeah, right, exactly. Because she did leave. You know Richmond, yeah. which is a pretty safe freaking which place in comparison, great. Yeah. or has the potential to be. I mean, city walls, a group of hundreds of people as opposed to seven kids. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, they they should have sold the school harder. But if you pretend or if you forcefully fill in the blanks on your own, then that was awesome. Right. Set the defend the school, fight with this group, become part of the group, yep. lead the group. Yeah, like, yeah. All the while sure. protecting AJ, teaching AJ. Amazing, mm -hmm. great premise. Yeah. Perfect premise for the game. Um, so that part was amazing. I don't kind. I kind of don't like that they stepped Clem back from from New Frontier. Like, I, they're kind of sweeping yeah. New Frontier under the rug. But New Frontier Clem was much more of a badass, hardened soldier for sure. than this Clem. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if like they're they're trying to say that she's softened because of AJ, like now that she has AJ or whatever, that has like now introduced some new, I guess more, um, I don't want to say maternal, but I guess caregiving kind of feelings. Um, so that makes her a little softer. But I, yeah, I agree. I think um, the new frontier Clem acted in ways that this current Clem would not act yeah. like. She's very sure about the decisions she's making. She knows hard calls have to be made, and she's going to make them. And she's not going to look back. Right. And no apologize. hesitation. Yeah. yeah. Like, she's going to say, like, no, he was a threat. Like, this had to be dealt with. I've seen this before. Blah, blah, blah. Like, go down the list, and I'm sorry if you feel like this is wrong, but I know this call had to be made. Right. And so, like, yeah, that, that, that Clem was such a badass, so hardcore, battle-hardened, like, for sure, and yeah, she's gotten a little bit softer now, which um, maybe that's why, you, maybe that's why like you care a little bit more because she is she does have that more like innocent kind of quality to her when she's like, a little less badass. Mm -hmm. But still, um, yeah, I, I love that to see that Clem in New Frontier, and I would liked 
elements of that, if not the entire thing, back into this one. They had elements where, like, Mitch is threatening her with a knife and she's just like, oh, disarm him. <laughs> Yeah. Get out of my face. Right, but, right. Yeah. yeah, not enough yeah, to make it exactly. consistent anyway. Mm -hmm. They really toned down her skill set for yeah. this game to make this game happen. And yeah, they didn't have to. They could have made her still this like strong, self assured yeah. leader type with a higher level of skill set and just introduce the enemies like Lily with a higher level of skill exactly, set. Exactly, yeah. So yeah. The, the, everything, I would have liked it if the bar had been raised a little bit higher for everything. Because mm -hmm. you still have this group of kids where they seemed amazing. And then they seemed like complete noobs in episode two yeah. and moving forward. Right, right. You get some people like Lewis who were just completely like at a law. Oh, if they come, I'll get defeated first. Do, do, do. And yeah. like not even, he was joking, but he was also telling the truth. Exactly, so, yeah. Like you can't find, 10 years into the apocalypse, you can't find total noobs anymore. So yeah, yeah. You can find, I would have liked that she found the school and like they first were presented. Hardcore group comes out. Shoo, 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 get her out of the burning car. Shoo, shoo. Code seven guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, yeah exactly. they're in. They're out. They're efficient. They're right. badasses. Exactly. And, yeah. Like keep that the whole way through. Then that's a group that can put a serious dent in an mm -hmm. army. Yeah. As opposed to suddenly we're a group that you find in year two of the apocalypse. Mm. Where some of us have a certain skill set, <laughs> yeah. and some of us are like, I don't know what I would do if there was a monster there. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. come on. So oh, man. it was an amazing game, but it did have. Some inconsistencies right, yeah, that kept sure. throughout, yeah. but overall, overall, definitely huge jump in quality. Oh from, yeah, from season two, huge yeah. jump in quality from New Frontier. Mm -hmm. Super fun, super amazing. If the same team comes out with another game, even if there are inconsistencies, I want to play it yeah, again. Exactly. The overall the, game was yeah. so much fun, with yeah. so much emotional impact, yeah. and a much higher level of storytelling. For sure, it was just amazing to play through. Yeah, I agree whole, 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 wholeheartedly. That like this one was fantastic. The quality of the writing was fantastic. They did great. Um, like seeing all the the new faces and some of the old ones again. Fantastic that they brought Lily back as the antagonist. Like just fan fantastic job. And I like the. I mean, it kind of lends itself to the same art style, but it's updated and it yeah. has like. And the music was still great and then a decent amount of the uh, episodes and whatnot. So. Overall, fantastic quality game. I would definitely recommend it. I'd play it again. Um, like, if I didn't already know the story, then like to play it again with new eyes would be fantastic. Because it's it's such it's such worth it's worth it. Like it's worth putting in the time to play it for sure. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, yeah, I would I'd want more from the same it. team. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, we're going into a lot of the plot holes here because that's what we do. We analyze the crap out of things that we get into, but that doesn't mean that. We didn't think the overall experience wasn't super. Oh yeah, it was just amazing. It was a great time. We had a fun time playing it, and yeah, we. I would want more yeah. from the same team 100%. or similar team. Yeah, I'll be right there if they if they have a new release. I'll be be right there to play it. Uh, they it did great, and uh, yeah, I mean, couldn't give them more kudos um, than what they pulled off for sure. Yeah, along those lines, we did have recommendations from a couple of subscribers, and we will probably be jumping into those. Um, one of them was. Um, Firewatch from Pop Tart Milkman, who had mm -hmm. said that Sean Veneman, who worked on the first game script, which was also amazing, yep. that's the game. This, these two were definitely the highest out of the four. Right, right. Not even close. The other two were at a noticeably lower. But anyway, yeah, Sean Veneman did Firewatch. It's a game with a, a well received story. I've heard a lot of good things about it, but I don't want to know anything about it. Right. But anyway, we're going to jump into that. We've also gotten some requests from other people that we're probably going to jump into soon. Um, Detention was one, Little Hope was another, yep. so yeah, yep. we're going to plan on jumping into those games very soon. If you guys have any other thing else you want to see us play, let us know. Mm -hmm. If you guys agree with our opinions on any of what went down in, in uh, final season, let us know. If you disagree with any of our opinions and you want us to burn in a ballsy hell, let us know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All comments are welcome. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, be sure to, even if you have another recommendation, feel free to drop it in the comments. And um, also you can join us on Twitch as well because we were streaming this bad boy. Um, so you can watch it in real time with us and get our reactions while it happens. Um, but yeah, other than that, we'll see you guys in the next game. It was beautiful. Hate to see it go. I know, yeah. we're going to miss playing it the next weeks, too. I know, I know. Oh, sure. man. But, yeah, all good things must come to an end, so they yep. say, until they invent 
perpetual energy and yeah. perpetual life and figure out how to way to outlast the dying of our sun. So <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. If you figure out all of that stuff, yeah. let us know. Be sure to let us know. <laughs> Definitely let us know. Yeah. All right. See you guys next time. <laughs>